Okay, can, can you see my screen? Yep, I can. Wonderful. Take okay, it away. Cool. Hi guys, my name is uh, Marcin Szymczkowski, uh, and my is managing our life with Org Mode and other tools. Uh, hopefully I don't run into any technical problems. I think that Vim users are trying to read us up today, uh, so we'll see if we can deal with that. This will be a pretty short talk about how I've been uh, managing my time with Org Mode over a couple of years, some things I've learned, uh, strategies I've developed. This talk should be um, uh, should be accessible for new users, and I think advanced users will also get a lot of benefit from it. Um, I hope you find it useful for your personal and professional life. Uh, so I want to start by saying that work mode is pretty complicated with a lot of features. Uh, sorry, someone's saying my sound is choppy. Is that better? Can you hear me now? It seems a little louder, but still a little bit choppy. Do go on, try. I don't really know what to, what to do about that. Um, okay, please carry on. It might be due to your internet connection. Sorry. Yeah, I think I might have a bad connection. Yeah, possibly. But please go ahead. Thank you. All right, um, I'll do my best, guys. Uh, so, um, as I was saying, Word Mode has a lot of features. Uh, you can see just a few examples here, and this is really just the, the iceberg. Um, the philosophy that's common in Emacs and its ecosystem is that it uh, has a very high skill gap. Um, it takes a long time to master it, but the hope is that you invest uh, effort into it um, uh, well, it's an investment with the hope of a uh, large uh, productivity payoff in the long term. Uh, however, uh, obviously, org mode is just a uh, plain text format, so it doesn't have to be complicated at all. And uh, that's what I want to convey today is uh, to anyone who's um, eager to get into org mode but perhaps apprehensive uh, about its complexity, um, it doesn't have to be complicated. The way I see it, simplicity um, has a lot of advantages over complexity. First of all, the skill cap is much lower. Um, so you can get started, you can uh, become productive uh, much more quickly. You can free up your mental processing towards uh, your other goals. Um, so you shouldn't be thinking too much about org mode. Um, the idea is you should be thinking about how to use org mode to enhance your life in other ways. Uh, simple systems are more flexible, uh, they're less brittle, uh, and you also minimize the amount of effort that you put into your actual system instead of uh, using your system towards uh, towards your goals, basically. Um, so whether it's bookkeep bookkeeping, like uh, like up, like just putting effort into your system, uh, like, uh, keeping track of it manually instead of automatically. Um, that stuff interferes with your productivity. And of course, you can always add more features and uh, if you want uh, um, Yeah, guys, uh, I don't have uh, speakers or anything. I, I'm trying to talk next to the microphone, so if it's choppy, it's the network. Um, I guess it's my work here. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think I can do anything about that, but thanks, guys. So most people don't actually use work mode features. Obviously, there are a lot of them. Uh, but you do have to decide uh, which subset do you want to use. If you're a new user, um, you might be overwhelmed. Uh, you might not know uh, uh, what uh, features to use. Um, so I'm going to go over uh, Sort of the the org mode strategy that I've converged on after a couple of years, uh, and some of my rationale behind it. I hope that it's useful for you guys. So, here's my personal strategy in a nutshell. Uh, but the way I organize my to-do items, um, I keep my to-do list entirely in a in a single file. 
um, basically all of my tasks everything that I want to get done is centralized in a single file with a known structure to me. Um, I don't. I try not to spread them around uh, various files. Uh, and I will talk about uh, well, it should be more clear soon uh, um, the advantages of doing this. I don't use to-do items. Uh, if something is in my to-do file, it's implicitly to-do. So uh, I don't have to go through the step of manually, manually marking something to do. Uh, I see that as extra bookkeeping. If something is in my to-do file, then it's going to show up in my org agenda, and that actually simplifies things a lot. Uh, I know that's not how most people use org mode. Um, again, you can you can do whatever you want. This is just what works for me. And uh, I have subtrees in my to-do file that. Uh, provide structure to my, uh, uh, my day to day tasks. So here's kind of what the uh, high level structure looks like for my to do file. I have several categories. I have one category where uh, I put all of my new tasks. So when I have an idea for something I want to do, I just put it there and I think about categorizing it later. Uh, then I have recurring tasks. These are kind of of the tasks that make up the structure of my life. There's uh, tasks that come up again and again, whether uh, stuff like exercising or uh, work-related responsibilities or stuff like that. Um, and I'll go over recurring tasks in more detail later. Uh, and then I have uh, some other categories. Uh, and again, you can uh, you can organize this however you want. Um, And this is something I've converged on after, after some experience using org mode. Uh, for one thing, I was forgetting to mark tasks to do. So I would write up a task that I wouldn't uh, mark it to do and it wouldn't show up in my agenda. Um, and the other thing is that I would have to do items uh, scattered around my face, all my work files and uh, the uh, the structure of my, of my system was not apparently uh, clear with it being a sort of um, well uh, scattered around my various files and hard to keep track of. So when I do want to work on something, I uh, I schedule it, and this way it shows up in my work agenda. Uh, so I I set up my work agenda not to show me to do items, but to show me scheduled items. Um, and I, I don't keep to the scheduled dates as hard deadlines. Uh, this sort of makes my system flexible. So uh, everything that's in my agenda for a particular day, what I try to get done that day as much as possible. Um, and uh, if I don't get them done, then they uh, become overdue items and uh, the backlog starts growing. And so that's motivation for me to, to um, do as much stuff as possible every day so my backlog doesn't get uh, too big. Uh, but if I do have a hard deadline, then you can always use deadlines. Um, the other thing is that I don't give tasks uh, concrete times for every day. Um, I find that it's too much planning uh, to give a specific time for every task. It's not really that flexible. Instead, um, I keep my days pretty spontaneous and uh, when I'm able to do something, then I then I jump to do it. That not, might not work for everybody, um, but I keep myself flexible that way, and I don't give myself uh, hard deadlines or or times unless uh, unless you know um, I have a meeting or something where uh, um, a time is imposed by somebody else. But I try not to impose those on myself. So this is the basic strategy that I've been using to handle my tasks. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, I have recurring tasks as well. Um, and when I finish a recurring task, instead of uh, just deleting it or archiving it, I, I, I reschedule them. And uh, again, there are some tasks that uh, I will be scheduling a lot. So I develop a package to help me with this and sort of um, take away the, uh, the mental overhead of dealing with, uh, with recurring 
uh, task, and I'll talk about this a bit more later. So here's some packages I use, uh, which I think are really nice, and I think might help you as well. So the first is org super agenda. Uh, you can see here that uh, this is my org agenda view. And what super agenda does is it lets you group items together. So um, so things are, uh, so you have visual uh, groups of, of items that sort of you can do together at the same time. Uh, and it really helps a lot uh, when you're planning your day. Um, I do try to avoid having too many packages uh, because uh, the more there are, the, the more brittle the system gets. Uh, this one really is useful. So um, again, it lets you categorize your tasks however you want. And here's some ideas for how you can categorize uh, your tasks. You can go by urgency and priority, right? Um, you can create groups for uh, uh, the type of task, you know, um, like I have a shopping list, for example, and all of my uh, all the things that I need to buy show up together so that when I'm at the store, uh, I see them all at the same time or in the same place. You know, you can, uh, can categorize by school, work, personal, different aspects of your life, or the time of the day. Um, this might be helpful if you tend to leave all of your items until evening. If in the morning you don't feel any motivation to work on stuff, uh, you can uh, categorize some stuff uh, and uh, it out over the day um, so that you can keep a nice pace throughout the day of things that you want to get done. And of course, uh, there's probably an infinite amount of ways to categorize stuff, but these are just some ideas. So uh, here's how I set up uh, Work Super Agenda using Use Package. The first line is just making sure that it gets loaded after Work Agenda. And then I turn on Work Super Agenda Global Mode. And here I define the actual categories. Uh, so the first one is if you uh, if you assign actual times to your tasks, then this first category uh, will show all of the tasks for the current day, and it'll show a nice time grid. Right? Uh, we give it a name using colon name today, uh, and then we have some uh, we have some conditions for uh, when a task goes into this group. So here, if it's a uh, it's a task that uh, uh, goes into the time grid and it goes into this group. Um, also, if it has the to-do status today, then it'll go into this group. I don't really use this one very much, very often. The next one is a high priority group, and here I give it the order uh, one. So, uh, so you can specify the order that these groups appear in. High priority, I want to appear first. And again, the uh, the condition is that task has priority A. And then uh, this next one is interesting because uh, you have two different conditions. Either the work category is set or the work tag is set. Uh, and this gives you I think we've lost Martin's voice. Um, one second, please. We can try speaking, Martin, please. Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Please continue. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I don't know uh, where I cut off, but uh, the last thing I was saying was that uh, you can um, uh, you can use either categories or tags uh, to um, to categorize your your entries, your tasks, and this uh, this is pretty flexible. Um, and I'll go over how it works a bit later. And again, here's what uh, what my org agenda looks like. Uh, just a snippet of it. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there are multiple groups of related tasks. And again, here's how you set up a shopping list. Right? You, um, either 
So that's kind of the category shopping or the tag. And uh, then that, that, that means that you can have as many categories as you want. Uh, you just specify an order that they go in, uh, you know, lowest or first. And uh, yeah, and you can do other things like you can have waiting tasks with a to do status of waiting. You have low priority tasks at the bottom. Uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, uh, tags are the quickest way to categorize a task. So when I first make a task and I put it, uh, let's say, in my uh, general substring, then I'll give it a tag because I can just type it out quickly uh, and I don't have to think anymore, and it'll show up in my org agenda in the correct group. Um, but I use categories to also give some structure to my to-do list. So every subtree in my to-do list has a category. And here's where Okay, please hold on, we've lost sound again. One second. We might be good to go. Martin, can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me, guys? Yep, I can hear you, but I think you need to share your screen again. Yep, we can see you. Please do go on. Thank you. All right, so, uh, hi, guys. I restarted my browser. Uh, I thought where I was. Uh, I think I was coming here. Uh, yeah, this is what my work agenda uh, looks like uh, here's the, uh, the tech group, um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much that for Org Super Agenda. It's a very nice package from Alpha Papa. I gave the link there, uh, and I forgot to mention that I'll be posting the the slides in the IOC chat and also on my GitHub. Uh, so if you guys want to check out the links or um, but yeah, just go over the slides yourselves, then those will be available later. Um, okay, so here's a package that I authored myself. It's called Org Recur. I mentioned earlier about uh, recurring tasks and uh, the amount of uh, manual labor that uh, that I was going through. So, uh, uh, yeah. So basically, previously I was calling Org Schedule on an entry. Uh, Let's say, uh, I don't know, something like take out the trash, pretty simple. Uh, let's say I would complete this task and then I have to reschedule it to tomorrow. But I would do that manually every day. I would call or schedule, I would type plus one, and uh, then that would reschedule the task. Uh, it's, I guess it's not that much effort, but when you have a lot of tasks, uh, it is a bit unnecessary. Um, uh, I also have to remember. Uh, what the time delta or the date delta was for every task. So some tasks, let's say I wanted to reschedule to every weekday, say, uh, then Friday I would have to remember to reschedule it to Monday. Uh, yeah, so this I talked about already. So how this uh, package works is I put the, I call it the recurrence delta in the task setting instead. 
uh, and just make sure that the uh, that I see the recurrence in my, in my uh, org agenda, which shows the full heading. And this, no, um, this way, I know exactly uh, when the, the next day that, I, that this task will appear will be. Now, uh, when I'm done with the task, then I just call org recur finish to reschedule it, and I have to a key. So when I'm done with the task, I just put my cursor on it and I press T. Uh, and then that just reschedules it automatically, and I don't have to think about it at all. Right? So here's a visual example of how this works. Let's say you have this task scheduled. Uh, say today is October 26th, which is when I made this. Uh, let's say, uh, so this is an, uh, an org file, right? So the key binding is different. I have CCD there. So let's say I press that, and it, uh, it gets rescheduled automatically to tomorrow, which is pretty cool. It also provides a face for the recurrence, though, so you can uh, see it uh, is visually separate from the heading content. Right so here, here the plus one is uh, doesn't interfere too much with your reading uh, of the task. Hi, uh, ten minutes. Hi, uh, ten minutes. Okay, we have ten minutes left. Uh, the org refer also provides uh, some additional syntax. Right, so uh, all of these. Uh, date deltas are supported by org schedule. Right? If you uh, call org schedule and you type plus one, it'll schedule it to the following day. But it doesn't support something like weekdays, something that I added to org recur. Uh, and you can also configure it to work on non recurring entries. And uh, for example, you can mark them down and archive them. So I use the same command uh, on both recurring and non recurring uh, tasks. To finish them off. And so basically, this way I can open up my org agenda. I can put my cursor on the task and just keep pressing B to mark them all done and just go through them really quickly. So here's some, uh, some examples. Uh, let's say you have a list of roles that you want to go through every day uh, at the start of the headline or actually wherever you want. It can be at the end as well. Uh, you just type uh, pipe plus one pipe. And it'll get picked up by org recur automatically. Right? And then this will recur every day. Here's another one that recurs every day. Uh, here's one that recurs every week. So plus one W. Again, this is org schedule syntax, so nothing too complicated. Here's one that recurs every month. Let's say you want to stay on top of your financials and spending, uh, you want to do that every month. Here's some more. Let's say you want to fill in your timesheet at work. Uh, you can give it the weekday syntax, and that'll make sure that it doesn't show up on weekends. You can also do stuff like Saturday and Sunday. Again, this isn't supported by work schedule. This is just work recur. Uh, but I find this is pretty useful. Let's say you want to do every weekday and Saturday. That's fine as well. Or maybe you want to do something on the fifth of every month. Well, then you just put five. That's org schedule syntax again. Uh, so you guys can check out on the GitHub repository uh, some recommended configuration, uh, how to configure org agenda as well. It's not really necessary, but it'll, uh, it'll make things a bit uh, easier to use. Here are the key bindings I use to complete a task. I use CCD and Work mode and just the in org agenda. I also have, uh, there's also a, a command built into org recur uh, to schedule to today. So let's say you have a to, uh, an overdue item, you want to reschedule it to today, uh, you just can type zero in org agenda really quick. If you want to schedule something to tomorrow, you just type one. And if you're a mouse user, you can also uh, complete tasks with the mouse. That, comes in handy sometimes. Uh, there are some alternatives to, to this, which are already included in org mode. Uh, and I uh, go into these in the GitHub repo. I personally find these to be a bit too complicated. Um, they have some shortcomings, uh, but they may be more suitable for you. I have a discussion about this. Um, there are some things that org doesn't support, like uh, let's say the first Sunday of every month. 
um, that's something that uh, you'll have to look into an, an alternative for. But for most things, for uh, for all of my needs, basically, I have to dive into into one of these. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, using Git, and I'm sure a lot of people do this already. Um, but you can put all of your org files into a single repository to track them. And then you can use Smackit, which is really excellent. Uh, and you can uh, make sure that you don't lose anything. Right? You can catch unintentional deletions and modifications. Uh, you can review recently made changes uh, and periodically. Um, and pretty much it's pretty simple, and Magit makes it uh, makes it a really nice experience. And it kind of ties into org recur because I have uh, I have a recurring uh, task to review all of my org changes every week. Um, so this makes sure that uh, well that I didn't delete anything by accident, which uh, has happened sometimes. And when it does happen, uh, I just revert it using my Five minutes. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, hopefully um, uh, everyone can agree that uh, I didn't use any really complicated aspects of org mode. Uh, my system is really very simple. Um, and it works well for me because I barely have to think about it. I, I don't have to do much bookkeeping at all except for uh, scheduling items uh, initially. Um, but uh, probably uh, they'll hire you uh, when this doesn't suit your needs, and then you'll be looking to reach out to more complex functionality, and that's fine as well. And definitely you'll be using org mode in a different way than mine. There's so many features in it. Um, so if you're a new user, then no worries because so, uh, you'll converge on a best practice for yourself. Uh, I wrote some uh, slides about other tools, but they're not free software, so they'll be uh, in the slides when I post them, unless someone has an objection, but I won't be going into them. All right, so here are my details. I'll leave this up for a couple seconds since I still have a few minutes. Um, there's my init file if you want to look into my actual org mode and org agenda configuration. Uh, any questions, feel free to, to ask in IRC. I'll be checking that uh, in a few minutes. So I'll just leave this up for a few more seconds. And I wanted to give credit to the photos that I used. And that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thank you for your talk. Now, since the talk is logged, we're going to wait a couple minutes to see if there are any um, questions on the IRC. While we're waiting, I'm just going to give a quick shout out slash announcement. So, Aramis is watching and he'd asked about the orga organized presentation that whether organizes G drive integration is possible without using proprietary software to which Elon, uh, one of the people working on the project replied that it actually is and that they're just using their a REST API, not even an SDK. So it's just plain JavaScript accessing a REST API. So I hope that answers that question. Um, also, I'm gonna, I'd like to give a quick shout out to RWP and to many of in the emacsconf accessible channel who've been basically giving textual descriptions of what's been happen happening in each talk mm -hmm. since the conference uh, started. So that's wonderful. Thank you both so much. And of course, anyone else, if they're doing that also.